Does everyone know where I am right now in the course? So if you go to like the course outline button, it'll open up this side menu. Then you can hit this switch button in here. And then you can go to intro to programming, which should be the second course. So if you click that one, it takes a second to load. And then you can scroll down on the same left sidebar down to loops and click that open. And then at the bottom, there's this reverse problem. Cool. So let's see if I can make this bigger. Yeah. Cool. And again, if you ever want to close this sidebar, you can just click this course outline button and it'll close for you. So we'll open and close it. Cool. So let's go ahead and look at this problem. Is everybody here with me? Cool. Yeah, no worries. Cool. Could you go over it again? Mm -hmm. So in the top left, there's this course outline button. Let's click the little course outline. And then there should be a switch button, a gray button, kind of at the top. So click that and then go to Intro to Programming, which should be the second course under Full Stack Online. And if you click that one, then you can scroll down to Loops. I think it's like the seventh section. And then the problem is Reverse. I guess it was the polydrome, because the reverse figures it out thanks to the evolution of the polydrome. Oh, I see. Sure. Let's, uh, let's start with reverse. Cool. So we're at the reverse problem. We'll close this sidebar again. Cool. So down here, we have some output. Right? So it asks us, write a method reverse that takes a word as an argument, and it returns the word with all the letters in reverse order. Cool. So here we see, you know, it looks just like the instructions, reverse, and it takes in one word as an argument. So somebody's gonna pass in some word, and we want to reverse all the letters in that word. So we can see down here that they are calling this method that we're about to write, and they're passing in cat, programming, and bootcamp. So what we can do is now that we kind of know what we should be expecting, should be some string, so remember if we see these quotation marks, we know that it's a string. And we want to be able to, if we're passing in cat, we want it to output TAC, right? Just cat backwards. And we can kind of use this notation here to see exactly what it's expecting us to output. So this first one's expecting us to output tag, second one, yarm yorp, and this last one, pack tube, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, cool. So what we can try and do here is, since this is a loop section, maybe we can try and use a loop. Does anybody have an idea of a loop that they want me to use? What's like a good, good loop we can use? Yeah. So a loop is our way of writing some code that's going to get repeated. Right, so repeated with inside of a method. So if we use sort of like these little dashed lines to denote like where like a loop will go, let's say, then inside of here we can say this code will be run more than once. All right, so we're able to write some code inside of here that will get run more than one time, right, which can be useful if maybe we want to do something, essentially the same thing, multiple times. So what we can do here is we can say, maybe we want this loop to run five times, 10 times. Um, it depends on what we want to do with our loop, right? So one idea that I have for how to reverse this string is if we just start at the end of the string and start taking each letter as we go from the end to the beginning and putting it into like a new string. And then we can just return that new string at the end, right? So to do that, we need a couple things, right? So I'll sort of like make a note of that. So I want to 
make a new string. And I want to loop from the back of the, we'll say, word, right, which is this word that they're passing in. So we want to loop from the back of the word toward the front. And as we do that, we want to, want to, oops, we want to add each letter into the new string. Cool? So I think being able to write out some strategy tips is definitely helpful in terms of trying to figure out what we want to do inside of our code. I think they, I think Alvin does the same thing in his white, whiteboard video. Um, it's just nice to be able to try to like figure out a strategy before you dive in and start typing away. So using these kind of three steps, oh, I guess we want to return the string at the end. Return string when all done. Cool. So that looks like pretty good to get us started. So let's start by making a new string. Right, so I'll make a new string. We'll just say uh, string equals string. Right, so now I just made a new string. Done. Now we just need to do these last three things. So we want to start from the back of the word towards the front. So if we use our little lines right here, as where we're going to write some looping code, we'll delete those in a second, but for right now we can leave them there. So if we want to loop from the back of the word towards the front, how could we, how could we try and do that? Yeah, so we need to kind of know, you know how long this word is. Um, and let's say we use, we'll use a while loop, right? Because a while loop seems like a pretty, pretty, chill, pretty chill loop. We'll mess around with it in a sec. So we need to know how long this word is. And then once we know how long it is, maybe we can start counting down until we get to zero from however long the word is, right? So this word right here, this cat, has three letters, right? But if we remember from last time, a string starts off at zero, right? So in code, we tend to like to start things at zero. So although this cat has three letters, this first letter, this C, oops, make this a little bigger, this first letter, is at the zero spot. And then this A is at the one spot, and this T is at the two spot. Right? So we never actually get to a letter at the three spot because our string starts at zero. Right? So although the length is three, or at least we can see that it's three, we also need to remember that there is actually no letter at space three. Right? So that is kind of useful for us. So the last thing that we need to definitely make sure of is when we're looking at our word, how do we get an individual letter? Because right? all we see right now is a single word and it's inside of quotes, so we know it's a string. But how do we get just one letter out of this string? Yeah, exactly. We can use square brackets, right? So let's say, for example, let's scroll down a bit. So we have this string of cat. If we use these square brackets, we're able to specify a specific letter at a specific spot in our string. So if we say zero, that's just this first letter, the C. And then if we say like one, that means we're referring to this A. And likewise for the two, it means we're referring to this T. Cool? So that's useful for us. So now we have a way to pull out a single letter from this string. And we need to, once we can pull that letter out, we do want to add it to our result string. All right, so we're making this string here. So it's an empty string, there's no letters, no spaces, and we're assigning it to this variable. And then hopefully at the end, that variable is gonna have all the good stuff we want, so we can just return that variable and not have to worry about it too much. So let's go ahead and start this while loop. So what is one thing that we always have to make sure of when we're writing a while loop, or any loop for that matter? Yeah, so we definitely need an end. What else do we need? Yeah, so we always want to make sure that we aren't going to have an infinite loop. 
right? And we also want to make sure that we have some condition to check. So we want to make sure this while loop is going to go until something happens, at which point it's just going to stop, right? So we can kind of mess around with that. So let's say we have a variable. Um, let's say counter. And we'll set it equal to 0, right? And we can say while counter is less than 3. And then again, like I said, we want to make sure that we never go way, way, way forever. So we want to make sure we say counter. And then we're going to now set, oops, move this mouse. So every single time we go through this loop, we're going to change the amount that our variable is referencing, right? So we have this while loop, and every while loop needs an end statement, so it knows where to stop thinking, or where to stop running that code over and over. And every while loop needs a condition, right? And so here, we're saying counter, which we know at the very beginning of our loop is equal to zero, because we just said it. And we're using this less than operator, which we can say, you know, this counter, it's gonna start at zero. So while this counter is less than three, we want to keep doing some stuff, right? So inside of here, we can use our put statement and puts so far so good, right? And then once we do that, our counter is now going to change, right? So we're going to take whatever our counter originally was, which at the very beginning is zero. We're going to add one to it. So now it's going to be one. And then we're going to change the value of our counter, All right? So this loop should only run a couple times, but I think it'll be good to help us see what we're working with. So we don't need those dashed lines. We just run this real fast. Cool, so if we move this up, right, we see that it's run. This so far so good, so far so good, so far so good. All right, and it's running it in three blocks of three because we're calling this method three different times, right? Calling it three different times here, once, twice, three times, All right? So now that we know that our loop does something, we want to make it do what we want it to do. So if we check back with our notes, right? always get to check back on the notes. So we have our result string. We want to loop from the back of our word towards the front. So how can we, how can we do that? Right? You mentioned earlier that we want to keep track of how long this word is. How can we find out how long the word is? Yeah, right, so we can use this, we can say word.length, right? So this will give us a number of however many letters the word that's getting passed in is. So what we can do here is if we want to go back from the end of the word to the beginning, we need to be able to pull out an individual letter one at a time as we go from the end to the beginning, right? But if you remember, we have a way of pulling out an individual letter. It just depends on which letter we want to pull out at a time. So what we can do here is, instead of setting our counter to 0, we can go ahead and say, maybe our counter, instead of starting at 0 and going up, it'll start at a really high number, which matches up with however long our word is, based on this word.length here. And then we can just go down towards 0. Right? So we have to change some stuff. We have to change our condition, because now we're no longer going up, we're going down. Right? So while our counter is, let's say, greater than 0, and then instead of adding one to our counter, we want to subtract one. Right? Cool. So we just changed our loop from going up, counting up towards 3 from 0, and now it's counting from some larger number down towards 0. Right? And all we had to change was wherever our counter started, the condition for how long our counter should keep going, and what our counter was going to be doing and changing, in this case, decreasing, every single time we run through our loop. Cool. So if we try this one more time. Cool. So it output three times, right? Which is pretty good. 
uh, there's three letters in cat, so that kind of makes sense, right? So let's go ahead and see what exactly we can maybe do with this, right? So we'll use the same syntax, right? So we have here, we can use these brackets to find a letter inside of this string, right? So the question is, you know, how do we get the number that we're currently looking at? Well, we can use our counter, which should be a changing number every single time we're going through our iteration, right? We're changing it right here. It starts off at the end of our word. So why don't we use that to look into our string to see if we can get a different letter. So instead of printing out so far so good, let's print out something else, right? So we have this word. And the very first time that word is cat. So what if we look at the letter at our counter, right? This looks pretty good. We know that the counter is same length as the word, right? What, what's going to happen when I run this? So this number is going to start at 3, right? So it's going to start at 3. So it says while well, 3 is so while well, 3 is greater than 0. So that's still true. This condition is still true. So our while loop will keep going. And so right now we're going to look for if our word is cat, it's going to look at the letter at cat at whatever our counter is. Right? So it's going to look at cat at 3. Is there a letter at spot 3 in our cat? Yeah, so we probably want to just start with one little bit less than our word length. Right? So now we don't ever have to like try to find a letter that isn't there. Cool? So this will start off at 2. Cool. So let's, let's see how that goes, right? So we got a T, and we got an A, but we're missing that C. So what do we have to change to get that C? Yeah. So we do want space zero, right? Cat at space zero, that's our C that we're missing. So instead of just decreasing this counter until it gets to zero, because once it gets to zero, it asks, is zero greater than zero? No. So it doesn't run this loop that third time. So we really want to say, less than or equal to zero. Because now it'll go and it'll say, is zero less than or equal to zero? Yes, and I want the letter for cat at space zero. Right? So if you run this now, cool. So now we're getting all three letters. Right? Pretty good. But we still need to return them all at once. Right? So now that we know that this word at counter, right? is anybody unfamiliar with this, these square brackets? We're able to find a, yeah, no worries. So yeah, so these square brackets are kind of cool. So, cool. So down here, we have this, this like, this string, right? So we'll change the letters around a little bit. So they kind of correspond to numbers. So in code with strings, which are, you know, what we call anything that's inside of these quotes. So with the string, the letters start at a zero spot. And by that I mean that the very first letter we sort of refer to as like the zero with letter. Right? So if we want to find the zero with letter in cat, that would be the C. Right? And then the first letter, or the letter at the one spot, would then be the A. Right? And the letter at the two spot would then be the T. Right? And so there is no letter at the three spot for cat. And so we can't access the letter at the three spot. And so we can access these letters inside of this string using these square brackets. So these square brackets, when you call them or when you place them right after a string, it allows you to say, I want just the letter at the two spot of this string. Right? And so I've used these numbers here to basically say, like, these are where the spots are. So again, this is the zero spot. And then this would be the one spot. And then the two spot. So if I say square bracket two, I should get back the string of two. Oops. Cool. So I should get back exactly this if I run this. Right? And same thing if I change this to three, then I should get back, in this case, the three. Right? 
So yeah, so square brackets are kind of cool. They allow us to get like an individual element out of a collection of elements. So we see this with strings, and we also see it with arrays later on. But for right now, we're just working with strings. Cool. So when I say word, I'm referring to whatever word is getting passed in to our method. Right? So in this case, that word inside of our method is referring to this cat. And then when we call it on this one later on, that word right here will refer to this word programming. Right? So what we want to do is we want to find a specific letter inside that word, and we want to add it to something that we'll be able to keep track of the different letters as we go through each one of these loops. So we have our handy dandy variable right here. So what we can do is we can actually add things to this string. So the same way that we're changing the value of this variable here, this counter variable, we can also change the value of our string variable every single time we go through the loop. So what we can do is, if we know that, or we've seen that word at whatever spot our counter happens to be at during each loop is going to print out to us these different letters, C, A, T, then instead we can just start to use those letters and place them into our result string. So we have this string right here, and so we can say, String equals string plus whatever this letter is, right? Because you can add strings together. All it means, let's say we take the string of one string, we say plus second string. Oop. What this is going to return to us is good old one string and no space because I didn't put a space. And then it'll be second string. Right? But if I put a little space here, then we'd see something like this. Cool. Oh, sorry. And that. All right. So we can add strings together, treat them kind of like numbers, but it basically just combines them into one giant string for us. So we can do that here. We can take our original string, which at the very beginning is just some quotation marks, nothing inside of it, and then we can keep adding letters as we go along. All right. So we can use our put statement again, which allows us to just print stuff to the console. So we can see stuff down here, and we say puts string. So now, we're hopefully going to change our string every single time we go through our loop, and then we will be able to see what it is, and this counter is going to help us from not doing this loop forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Cool. So let's see how we did. Cool. So, oops. So the string starts off as T, right? And then as we start adding stuff to it, it grows. We're able to change what this is as we keep adding like a new letter to it every single time. All right? So we can kind of walk through this. So if our example is this cat example, we're going to use the word cat. So this word right here, so we'll say word is cat. And then down here, so we know that, let's see, word, which is really just cat, right? So word equals cat. And we know that this is oops, three letters long, right? So the length is three. So at this point, our counter. is really only going to be two, right? Because our word, which is cat, has three letters, but we're subtracting that number by one, right? So it starts off at two. And so now we're saying while our counter is less than, or sorry, while our counter is greater than or equal to zero. So we'll start off at two. And is that greater than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. So then it hops in here. And so it looks at word at counter. So we use, again, these little square brackets, which help us pull out a specific letter from that string. And so we can say, if our counter is 2, right, it's at the very beginning of our loop, if our counter is 2, we want to find the letter at the second spot inside of our word cat. Right? So if we look down here, the letter at our second spot is this T right here. Right? It kind of lines up with that T right above it. 
So this is the letter at our second spot. So we know that this right here is going to be the letter T. And so we add that to our empty string. So it basically looks like this. We say some string, right? So some quotes with nothing inside, plus some quotes with just the T inside. And we now know the return value of this. So once we do the math there, it's just going to be oops, this. All right, so now this variable has a new value. It just has a string of t, right? Which is what we see right here when we put it out in the next line. Cool. Then our counter will change. So now instead of being two, our counter is now one, right? So we subtract this one from two, and so now our counter is one. And then because of the fact that we're inside of a loop, and we get to the very end of this loop, it goes right back to the top of the loop. All right, so now we're up here, and now our counter is not asking, is 2 greater than or equal to 0? Right, because we just changed it down here. So now it says, is 1 greater than or equal to 0? And so inside of here, we have to look, OK. So we have this string, right? And so now our string is different, right? Because we just changed it the last time we're here. So now this is our string right here, which got these two quotes and that t. And now we're trying to add it to whatever is word and then the square brackets. And our counter now is 1, right, because we just subtracted it. So what is the letter at spot 1 inside of our word? Well, if our word is cat, and this was the second spot, then the one spot is 1 just over. Right? So it's now going to be this A. So it's going to ask us to add. Right? We're adding this string, which is now these quotes with the T. And now we're adding just that one letter at spot 1, right? which is now this A. So that's why we see when they add them together, both the T and the A. Now we have the TA, right, which we print out right here. Cool. And we do it one more time. We decrement this. So now it's 0. Decreased it one last time. So now this is asking is 0 greater than or equal to 0. It says, yes, it still is equal to 0. And then now our string is a little bit different. So now our string has everything previously placed in that variable, so that T and that A. And now the last letter is the C. And that's the C because, right, our counter is now zero. So whatever letter is at the zero space in our word, which we can see down here, is just this C. Then we just want to say, OK, cool. We're going to add that last letter on. And then we're going to print out this string. And now we have tack, right? But the last thing we have to do is just return it at the very end. Cool. Yep, and so this is when it prints it out right here. And then this is when it prints it out as it returns it. All right. So we're able to just loop from the back to the front to get to this return value for our string. So we can comma these back in. And the good thing about loops is if it works for you know, a small input or a small word, if we write it correctly, it should work for a big word. All right, so maybe we don't need this line anymore. And again, these this little ha hashtag symbol, the pound sign, that's just a comment in Ruby, right? So it just means that they're not going to bother trying to run that code. It's going to skip over it. We can make little notes for ourselves like these. And so now it should work for all these other ones, right? Not just for cat. Let's check it out. Cool, right? So we see tack, yarm, yorp, and pimac tube, right? Exactly what we expect to see. Cool. Yeah. Oh, this one right here? That one? Yeah. I think that's just because of how like we are outputting it on our end. Nothing to do with the code that we're writing here. Do have any questions about these loops, or what these square brackets mean, or this little greater than or equal to sign, or anything like that? How do you form an endless loop? Yeah. So this line right here, right, we're able to say we want to change the value of this counter, right? But without this line our counter would just always be 2, 
right, which is what it starts at. All right, so it starts at 2 at the very beginning, or at least if we comment these out. All right, so in this one, it starts at 2, because that's how long our word is, right? Our word is three letters long, but we subtract one, so it starts at 2. And so we're saying, you know, while that counter, which starts off at value 2, while it is greater than or equal to 0, we want to keep doing this stuff, right? Ruby knows to just keep doing everything inside the loop until this is no longer true. But if we're never changing this value, then 2 is just always going to be greater than 0. So it'll come up here. It'll say, OK, 2 is greater than 0. I guess I'll do this. And then I'll come down here. And if we don't have this line, it just says, OK, well, I guess I'll go right back to the top again. And it says 2 is greater than 0 again. It's like, cool. So I just keep adding stuff to my string. And it'll keep doing that because this number is never going to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have this counter so that we can keep track of when we want this loop to stop running. Cool. All right, so let's take a oops, swing over the next one. Alrighty, so this one says, write a method is palindrome, and it wants us to, again, take in a word, right, just like the last one, where they give us some string, you know, it's a string because it has the quotes, and we want to do something with the string. All we want to return is true or false, right? So if you remember from last time, what are, what are true and false? Exactly, right, they're just booleans, so it's either one or the other. So inside of here, we want to say, OK, our method takes in one word, and it should return true if it's a palindrome, false if otherwise. And again, it says palindrome is a word that is spelled the same forwards as backwards, right? So you can see here that race car is, you know, starts with an R, ends with an R, second letter is an A, second to last letter is an A, and so on until it gets to the beginning, right? So what's kind of cool about this is it means that let's say we were to write one of these words in reverse, right, which we just did, it should be the exact same as the very first word, right, the word that we pass as argument, right? So if we look back at that code, so this is the code that we just wrote, right? We'll bring this over the other page. A little copy-paste action. Cool, right? So we just wrote, oh, what's going on? Cool. So we just wrote this whole method in the other file. Get rid of some of this stuff. We don't need all that. Cool. All right, so this is the code that we just wrote. So what's kind of nice about this code is a lot of what we want to do for this problem is maybe similar to what we did for the last problem. So if we know that a word is a palindrome because it's spelled the same forward as it is backwards, well, if we just get the word backwards, right, which we just did, then we can just compare and see if it's equal to the word just forwards. Right? So using the exact same code that we just wrote, Right, we can decide to make a loop and start from the back of the word, go towards the front of the word, save all that stuff into a variable, and then we can just check the variable against whatever word that they pass in initially, and we'll see if they're the same. So we can start by making a result string again. So we just use, again, these two quotes. We don't put anything inside. We don't need to. And we can make a counter again. And we'll do word.length minus 1. So why are we doing minus 1? Mm 
Yeah, right? Because we don't want to access, if the word is cat again, we don't want to access a letter at the three spot. There's no letter there, right? So we need to make sure we start at the second to last spot, right? Or, well, the last spot, that's actually a number that's there, or a letter that's there. So counter is word.length minus one. And then we can make our while loop again. So what does every while loop need to have? Yeah, so an end is a good place to start. Yeah, and we need our condition. All right, so what condition do we want for this one? Yeah, so we're, we're doing something very similar to what we just did, right? So we want to start from the end of our word and then go all the way towards the beginning of our word. Yeah, so we're on the right path, right? So we want to make sure we can start at the end of the word, right? So we have this handy-dandy counter, right? Yeah, so our word.length is like the very end of our word, right? So we're able to keep track of that with this counter, right? So you're on the right track, absolutely, right? So we want to say like while we're starting at the end of our word, and we can keep going all the way to the front. So we have this variable counter, which represents that same number, right? The end of our, our word. And so we want to say while our counter, well, we want it to change. So we can keep changing the counter so we can keep getting a different letter as we're going through our string. So we can say while counter is greater than or equal to zero, right? Because zero is the last or in this case, the very first letter in our string. So we want to make sure we go all the way from the last letter in the string all the way back to the first letter in the string. All right, so we still want to do some stuff in here, even when this counter is zero, right? But we don't want to do anything when the counter is like negative one, right? So now, the last thing we have to do before we start writing some code is make sure that this number is actually going to change as it's going through our loop, All right? So if it starts off at the end of our word, so a bigger number, and we want it to go down, all the way until zero, hopefully, we have to make sure that we decrease it. So counter equals counter minus one, right? So now, every time we go through this loop, it should decrease and decrease until it hits zero. And so, just like we did last time, we want to be able to pull out a specific letter at a time as we're going through our string. So how can we do that? How can we get a single letter from a string? Yeah, so we can use the square brackets, right? So our word is our string. We use square brackets. And what do we want to put inside these square brackets? Inside the square brackets, a start point, you said? Yeah, so what does that mean, a start point? Yeah, so we're using our counter to sort of like change the number as we're going through, right? So we're starting at the back of the word. You're absolutely right, yeah. So we can use this counter, right? And so it'll start off at the back of the word, and then this number is hopefully going to change every single time we run through this loop, right? It'll be a different number every time because we're changing the value down here. All right? Does that make sense to everyone? So this counter is going to start off at, we'll say, three again if our word is cat, and so it'll be three greater than or equal to zero. Yes, and so then look for inside of our word, it'll say word at three, right? And then as this number goes down, we'll be able to get word at two, and then word at one, and word at zero, and so on. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. So here, now we need to say we have this string, just like in our last problem. So we want to say, cool, now string, every single time we come through our loop, we want to change what our string is equal to. So we can use the string addition and say, whatever the string was before, we're going to add it to whatever letter we're currently at. Cool? So then, now that we have this, hopefully this will go through and it's going to turn our string backwards, right? Similar code to what we just wrote. So if we say, we just want to see how we did, right? We're hoping that this code should take our string and reverse it for us, just like the method we just wrote. Cool. So we see, or we'll. Cool. 
So we see that it is, in fact, oh, where did my thing go? Cool. <coughs> so we see that it is taking our words. So the very first time they call it, they use the word race car. And we can't really tell if it's reversing them, right? But we see down here, this one is definitely reversed, right? Because it starts with B at the end here, O. O T C A M P, right? So it's taking this word and just flipping it around. But we notice that these words are the exact same, right? Race car, it looks like it didn't do anything. Kayak, it did look like it didn't do anything again either. And the reason that is, is because those words are actually the palindromes that we're looking for, right? We can see here that they're expecting that when that happens, when they use the word race car, that it's true, which means that they were expecting for this exactly to happen. So, what we can do here is we can say, so right now we're putting the string that we just created, right? We reversed whatever they passed into us using our while loop, and then we printed it out to our console. But we want to see what our word is initially, right? The very first word that we put in. Word. Cool. So all we did was add the word that they used for this method, we put it right at the end of, right after, wherever we're putting our string. So we see that they are the same, right? Race car backwards is just race car, kayak backwards is kayak, and then boot camp backwards is pmac tube, right? So all we have to do is just say, are these two things the same? So we can say string equals to word. And we'll see what that prints out for us, right? Does everybody remember this double equals? Yeah, so we're just checking, are they the same, you know? So let's, let's hit it. And we see that it is printing out to us true, true, and false, just like we want, right? So now all I have to do is change this puts to a return. And now this method should do exactly what we want it to do. Cool, well, I guess we can get rid of this stuff too. Cool, right? So we expect to see a true, a true, and a false. That was the kind of initial thinking that I was going off the prior problem, but then when Alvin goes through it, he kind of jumps mm. different between that group. Like I told you, oh, I got distracted by this on the side. Yeah, so Ruby is really, really nice in that it has lots of different methods that we can use. So one such method that I assume that Alvin was using was He's using this reverse method. So let's say we just want to cool, right? So this method reverse should just return to us whatever this word was, but backwards, right? So essentially everything we just did, but in a nice handy dandy method provided for us by Ruby. Cool. So it's printing out these words, right? So everything we just did in that loop, this reverse method is actually able to do just on its own. Right? We don't have to do any extra code. All you have to do is just say whatever it is we want to reverse, and then dot reverse. So it's kind of nice and cool. And Ruby has lots of cool methods like that that are designed to make our lives a little bit easier. Um, but loops are fun too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Hmm. I'm not sure. Hmm. Right. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, try to figure that out for sure. How's it been going through it on your own outside of these sessions? Good, good stuff.